At this point, we know that eukaryotic cells basically diversify their DNA by using a process known as crossing over that takes place in meiosis. Now, prokaryotic cells, such as bacterial cells, do not actually undergo the process of meiosis and instead divide via process known as binary fission. Now, the problem with binary fission is we produce two genetically identical cells. And that's a problem because if we want to diversify our DNA, binary fission is not the way to go. Now, instead of undergoing meiosis, the methods by which our bacterial cells and other prokaryotic cells diversify their DNA is by using one of three different processes. So bacterial cells and other prokaryotes undergo three different types of genetic recombination processes, including conjugation, transformation, and transduction. So let's go over each one of our processes and see how the bacterial cell is able to actually diversify its DNA. So let's begin with the process of conjugation. Now conjugation in a way is a mating process because it involves two individual bacterial cells. Now before we actually discuss what, con what conjugation is, let's discuss what types of DNA molecules are found inside our prokaryotic cells inside bacterial cells. Now, aside from having the main circular DNA molecule inside the bacterial cells, most bacterial cells also contain small circular DNA molecules known as plasmids. And some of these plasmids basically contain the genes that code for proteins which give the cell resistance to drugs and other antibiotics. So basically, conjugation is a type of mating process because it involves two individual bacterial cells. And aside from the circular DNA that codes for most of the bacterial proteins, these bacterial cells contain additional DNA called plasmids. So plasmids, as we mentioned, are small circular DNA that replicate independently of the main DNA molecule and which carry uh, genes that code for proteins that give resistance to drugs. Now, although most plasmids do exist independently of the main DNA molecule, some plasmids can actually incorporate into the main DNA molecule and such plasmids, uh, such plasmids are known as episomes. So if we take a look at the following prokaryotic cell, our bacterial cell, this is the main DNA molecule of our cell and this smaller one is our plasmid. Now, what's the big deal with plasmids and conjugation? Well, basically, certain types of cells contain special plasmids known as the fertility factor or the F factor. And these are plasmids that code for special types of proteins that build something called the sex pillus. Now, the sex pillus is basically the cytoplasmic bridge that connects one cell to another cell and allows one cell to transfer genetic information to a different cell, as we'll see in just a moment. So, a cell that contains this fertility factor, the F factor, is called our F plus or the donor cell. While the cell that does not contain the F factor, our fertility factor, is known as our recipient or F minus. So to initiate the process of conjugation, the donor cell must actually use its F plasmid or F factor to actually replicate or to actually um, produce the proteins that build our sex pillus. Now, once again, the sex pillus is basically a hollow protein that connects one cell to the other cell, and it allows the transfer of our genetic information. So, the 
donor cell after it bit uh, after it builds the cytoplasmic bridge our sex pillars then replicates its plasmid and tra and transfers the uh, replicated plasmid to the other cell now if the plasmid is in fact an F plasmid then the recipient cell gains the ability to build the sex pili and becomes a donor cell so to see what we mean let's take a look at the following diagram so we have the donor cell or the positive cell the f positive that contains this small circular f plasmid shown in green so when our two cells come in close proximity this f plasmid is used to build the protein that is involved in the cytoplasmic bridge in the sex pillars and so that connects our two cells at the same time the f plasmid is also replicated and once it's replicated we transfer transfer it onto this cell. So this is the recipient. It doesn't actually contain our F plasmid initially, but after the F plasmid is transferred, now this recipient becomes a donor and it can basically go on and transfer the F plasmid to other recipient cells. Now the F plasmid, our fertility factor, is not the only plasmid that exists. There are other plasmids that exist, such as, for example, the R plasmid. The R plasmid is basically a plasmid that not only contains the proteins that code for the, X, for the sex pillars, it also contains proteins that give our cell resistance to drugs and antibiotics. So, Basically, this process is known as mating because we have two individual cells that basically um, that basically interact via this cytoplasmic bridge known as the sex pillars, and we transfer genetic information from the donor to our recipient. And this process of genetic recombination in bacterial cells is known as conjugation. So let's move on to transformation. So transformation is basically a type of genetic recombination process in which our cell takes up DNA fragments from the outside of that cell's environment and brings it into the cell and then integrates that fragment of DNA into its own DNA and this transforms our cell into a genetically different cell. Now, one common example of uh, transformation is the following. Basically, we take a cell or we take a bacterial cell that contains the genes that are harmful to eukaryotic cells. So we kill off those harmful bacterial cells and then we bring those harmful bacterial cells that are dead next to living bacterial cells that are living but which are harmful. Over time, those harmless bacterial cells will eventually become harmful because of transformation. So basically what happens is our harmless bacterial cell takes up genetic information, our fragments of DNA that came from the harmful bacterial cell and takes them and brings them into the cell and then incorporates that into its own DNA. And then when that DNA is transcribed, when we transcribe this section, we build proteins that basically end up harming some type of eukaryotic cell. So this as an example, this is an example of the process of transcribing transformation. So basically, ultimately, the end result is a slightly more genetically diverse DNA molecule, slightly more diverse bacterial cell. Now, let's discuss the final type of genetic recombination process known as transduction. But before we get into transduction, let's recall what a bacteriophage is. A bacteriophage is a type of virus that only infects bacterial cells and it hijacks the machinery of the bacterial cells and it uses the cells to build its own viral genetic information. Now, sometimes these bacteriophages accidentally take up a fragment of DNA of that bacterial cell instead of using its own viral uh, genetic information. Now, 
when these harmless bacteriophages infect other cells, other bacterial cells, they inject the cells, uh, they inject into the cells the DNA fragment from the other cell, which can then be integrated with that cell's DNA, and this increases the genetic information of that bacterial cell. So basically, in a way, transduction takes place accidentally. So this is shown in the following diagram. So we have our bacterial cell that is hijacked by our bacteriophage. Now instead of the bacteriophage taking up the viral DNA or RNA molecule, it takes up this fragment of DNA that came from our actual DNA of that bacterial cell. And so then it carries that DNA fragment that is harmless to another bacterial cell as shown. And it injects that DNA fragment into this bacterial cell. And then that fragment is incorporated with the DNA molecule of that particular cell. And now this new cell is genetically different than this initial cell. So this is the final method method by which our bacterial cell undergoes the process of genetic recombination. So once again, because bacterial cells and other prokaryotic cells do not actually reproduce via the process of meiosis, they reproduce via the process of binary fission. And because binary fission does not incorporate genetic recombination, they have to undergo other methods of genetic recombination. And these three methods are conjugation, transformation and transduction. Conjugation involves the formation of a cytoplasmic bridge, a sex pillus between a donor cell and a recipient cell, and the donor cell transfers the plasmid to the recipient cell. And so that gives our recipient cell a, a certain amount of genetic diversity. Now, transformation is the process by which our bacterial cell takes sub DNA fragments from the immediate surroundings of that cell and it incorporates the DNA fragments into its own DNA. And finally, transduction is the accidental take up of DNA fragments by bacterial cells from bacteriophages, which brought the DNA fragments from other cells, from other prokaryotic cells.